What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos. So tonight I want to talk about the security of Linux Mint. So recently uh, some news has been made from two individuals from the Ubuntu camp in regards to the security of Linux Mint. Now let me just go on record by saying um, I think that there is some validity in some of the claims that they've made. Uh, however, um, we're going to get into those, the nuts and bolts of it, and uh, the fact that I really, really like the Linux Mint project. And this by no means is a bash on Linux Mint. However, uh, in fact, a lot of it is actually defending Linux Mint, but I really feel as though there's an area of opportunity for Linux Mint to improve here. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So why am I discussing this on my channel? Well, first and foremost, I've been on the Linux Mint forums and I've seen this question posed. I've also seen comments made to some of my recent Linux uh, Mint videos about the security of Linux Mint. And I really feel like it's something that should be talked about. Um, the vast majority of Linux Mint's user base are often brand new Linux users and I feel as though uh, I have a responsibility with the platform being my YouTube channel and the voice that I have to help these newcomers to Linux and Linux Mint be a little bit more secure in their experience. Now by no means do I feel as though the Mint team is putting out a subpar product. I just feel as though the area of this particular area specifically with the kernel is something that they could probably do a little bit better of a job in and I'll discuss my thoughts on that a little bit more down the road um, but let's get into it so Pharonix actually posted an article and I'm gonna include all the links to everything that we're gonna be covering in the video description below and um, they cite these two individuals and I'm gonna read part of uh, an excerpt from this article it says it's unclear why Linux Mint disables all of their security updates although to some degree, they have to. They have tried to justify their disabling of kernel updates by suggesting that such updates could make a system unstable, and that normal users shouldn't get these kinds of updates. Anyways, it is something that might be better researched on their forum, since people have asked a few times over the past couple of years, and they probably have a better idea than us. I can say that it took many months to get a fixed version of Firefox packaged with Ubuntu. This Firefox statement is actually untrue. And Debian had already had security fixes in their package. This puts, puts Linux Mint users at risk and is one of the key reasons I never suggest Linux Mint to anyone as an alternative to Ubuntu. Um, so with that said, uh, that's just one of, uh, of the comments. Um, also, they cited, um, let's see here, the, this list of packages, which is actually found on Linux Mint's GitHub, uh, where is it? This list of packages uh, will never update. Instead of just integrating changes properly with the packages in the Ubuntu archive, they instead suppress doing security updates at all for them. I would say forcefully keeping a vulnerable kernel browser or XORG in place instead of allowing the provided security updates to be installed makes it a vulnerable system. Yes, I personally wouldn't do online banking with it. So, what do we have here? Um, do I feel as though these two particular uh, individuals from the Ubuntu camp think that they have the power to sway current Linux users off of Linux Mint by and large and move them to Ubuntu. No, I don't think that these individuals believe that they can do that. However, um, I think that they're planting a seed of doubt because if you look at what Linux touts as one of its biggest attributes, it's security. It's the fact that you don't have to run an antivirus uh, software program um, because of the way that our operating system is inherently designed. Um, it makes it less susceptible to attacks. So it's, they're really striking at the very heart of what makes Linux um, so great. One of the things, and that being security. So I think by planting this little seed of doubt um, they're really getting in the heads of a lot of Linux Mint users. And of course, when you have a site like Pharonix pick it up, uh, it's going to get widespread, and it has. So first and foremost, let's head over to the GitHub that was actually linked in that Pharonix article, and we see a whole list of packages here. Now, honestly, the vast majority of these, I wouldn't say are crucial to be updated 
whenever Ubuntu decides to update them. However, at the top of the list, um, we've got Linux, Linux image, Linux headers, uh, Linux restricted modules. Um, I believe that anything having to do with the kernel is definitely a really important update. Um, specifically because there may be some vulnerabilities and there are several that are found on a regular basis that need to be patched and then you should update your system to really keep you safe from attacks. Now the lead developer of Linux Mint actually responded to all of this and I'll, again I'll link this below um, stating a lot of the reasons mainly stability why these packages are not updated. However it is said here that anybody running Mint can launch Mint Update Manager go into the preferences and enable level four and five updates. I'm actually going to show you if you're a new Linux Mint users, a user and you want to have a, an up to date kernel, I will actually show you how to do what they're talking about here. So I've got update manager open. Let's go into edit and then preferences. And here's what they're talking about here in this particular article. So we see level four and level five. Uh, if you want all of these, um, particular updates to apply just check all these options and hit apply it's going to automatically refresh your sources list check for any updates and then as we can see here there isn't actually any updates I'm gonna hit refresh one more time just to make sure Okay, so there's no updates. Now, if you're concerned about the security and vulnerability of your system and being able to receive kernel updates on a regular basis, that's all you have to do to make sure that you get uh, regular updates that would uh, occur in uh, the official Ubuntu distribution with Linux Mint. Now, for those of you who may be watching this video and are new to Linux Mint and have no idea what a kernel is, uh, I spent all of about 10 minutes putting together my own custom little graph for you and I'm gonna show you what a kernel is and how it actually um, where it fits into this whole operating system so uh, displayed on the screen here is the graph that I've, I've put together now as you can see you've got three levels now this is probably the most simple um, elementary way I could describe what the Linux kernel is but uh, you've got your hardware on consider that your foundational level then you have your kernel which sits in the middle and then your software which sits on top so as you can see the kernel allows the hardware and the software to interact with one another if you take that kernel out the software and the hardware cannot communicate okay so now that you kinda know what the kernel does again the kernel is what allows your hardware and your software to communicate with one another okay now the kernel also contains a lot of uh, all of your drivers for things like my webcam for things like my graphics card things of that nature um, so that kernel plays a huge role in the operating system now when there's vulnerabilities in that kernel being that it plays such a significant role you can see how if an attacker got in through a vulnerability in the kernel it could wreak havoc on your system okay so my suggestion Linux Mint makes lots of tools to do routine everyday tasks I really feel as though this is an area of opportunity for the Mint team why not enable these uh, updates that I just enabled by default however if an updates available and it's a level four or five which Linux Mint feels as though these may be um, updates that could possibly make your system unsafe then provide a dialog box and a warning and ask if we want to apply these updates or not now kernel I believe should always be updated and I can understand why the mint team may not want to update it especially if there's proprietary drivers in, uh, installed specifically with wireless specifically with graphics cards I can uh, I can see why they wouldn't want that to happen because oftentimes updating a kernel or even xorg will you know completely trash your whole system which is why I believe that they've frozen those however they can also make a tool where if the system does not boot properly okay 
it's detected and an option is given where you can reboot into the last known good configuration which would be the previous kernel simple enough this is this would not take a very long time to implement and i think that um, it would fall right in line with the user friendliness of linux mint um, the normal user is not even going to know what a kernel is or uh, and also they're not going to know that to go into their software or the update manager and enable those level four and five updates they're just not going to know that okay so do i believe to a certain extent the security of the linux mint user could possibly be at risk yeah i do on a kernel level um, that firefox um, statement that was made um, is also addressed here linux mint uses the same firefox packages as ubuntu um, from the same repository, Firefox is a level 2 update, so every Mint user receives it by default. Okay, so the only ground that I feel as though those individuals have with the Mint team is on a kernel level. And I feel as though with all the tools that the Mint team has implemented in their distribution, something like I just described could be very, very simple. In fact, they already have something like that available with LMDE, their, the Linux Mint Debian edition. They have their update packs. Every time they release an update pack, there's a description of everything that was updated and what it is. So take that same technology, apply it to these Ubuntu updates to just the level 4 and 5 updates, and also create a tool so if the system doesn't boot properly or something's not working, it will give you an option to reboot into an older kernel configuration. Now, of course, this is something that's going to help the new Linux user because all of us know if your system doesn't boot, with an updated kernel, all you've got to do is get into the grub menu and boot from a previous uh, installed kernel that you knew worked, and you should be fine if, if that's what messed up your system. And a lot of the time it is. So, you know, Clem also talks about in here, and he makes a comment which I actually think is pretty funny. He said, anybody, run, anybody um, running Mint can launch Update Manager. And he tells you how to go into the preferences and enable level four and five updates. But here's the hilarious part. He says, thus making their Linux Mint as secure and unstable as Ubuntu. He took a little pop shot right there um, at Ubuntu. And you know what? In all fairness, if those two guys want to open their mouths and talk about the Mint team, they really need to look in the mirror because I'll be quite frank, um, there's very few distributions that I try uh, and test that have as many bugs as Ubuntu. Ubuntu is bug ridden. Now I'm not hating on Ubuntu. Of course I'm using Linux Mint which is um, using a lot of the Ubuntu system but you know in all fairness Ubuntu has its fair share of problems um, and a lot of the updates that Ubuntu pushes you, we're also assuming that every update that Ubuntu actually pushes out um, is, first of all, a, um, for instance, if Ubuntu kernel developers patch something in the kernel, we're trusting that they're a kernel expert. And I'll be honest with you, I've, I've had a lot of issues with Ubuntu, stock Ubuntu kernels and updated kernels. In fact, a lot of the time I'm going to kernel.org I'm getting all the vanilla sources and I'm compiling my own kernel because I've had issues with the Ubuntu kernel. So I wouldn't exactly call them the kernel authority. So just because they push out a kernel update doesn't always necessarily mean that it's a great update either. So with that said, I love Linux Mint. I think it's a great system. I showed you guys how you can easily um, up, uh, you know, actually get all of the updates that are coming directly from Ubuntu and the official Ubuntu distribution in your Linux Mint system. Also, if you want to update your kernel another way, and I have videos on how to do this, you can always go to the Ubuntu kernel mainline PPA. Oftentimes, if I don't want to compile my own kernel, I just want to test something out, you can come right down here. For instance, they have Linux kernel version 3.12.1 and you can download the kernel and just update it yourself and oftentimes that's what I do that's what I'm doing here I'm running Linux kernel 3.12 and I got it from the kernel um, mainline PPA so you can always just pull the kernel down yourself and manually install it um, but that's up to you hopefully this uh, video was helpful 
especially if you're a new Linux Mint user and you're not sure what the kernel even was, but you've heard maybe on the on the interwebs here that Mint was unsecure. Um, lay your head to rest. The only real thing out of that whole list that I feel as though should be updated on a regular basis is mainly the kernel. Um, I've got plenty of kernel videos on how to actually either um, compile your own kernel, install it from the mainline PPA uh, yourself, and in this video, of course, I showed you how to enable all those updates um, in the Linux Mint system. Uh, so you're getting all the updates that the official Ubuntu um, distribution is getting uh, itself. So as always, guys, I really appreciate uh, your support. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.